Roby Price, and welcome to my workshop. Back from the home center, I've got some plywood, some insulation, a bunch of two by fours, and some tap cons. We got to get some insulation up on these walls, and I have to have something that I can mount my dust collection system on. I just don't feel comfortable mounting into cinder blocks with a vibrating unit. I see that as being wrought with folly. So we're going to put up some insulation and some false walls. That will also give us something to put our shelving up on. And we're going to start over there in that corner. And um, I got to get that dust collector off the floor. It's taken up about 25% of my shop. So I'm going to get started. Why don't you join me? Tools, jigs, and accessories for the shop. Cyclone repair and installation. Well, it's time for a little honesty. I was setting up behind me, putting the cyclone in place, setting it on the floor on its bottom cone, wanting to show you exactly where I was going to put my dust collection and how I was going to route the pipes. I was going to leave it there for about 30 seconds and make the shot and move on. Well, my friend here had different ideas. It went over while I wasn't looking, and, um, and it pretty much broke up the intake chute. So I started searching for pieces and started gluing them on with the Weld On 4. And the Weld On 4 is the product that they recommend for any type of repairs on this. And I've done some repairs, and I'll be honest with you, that stuff is strong. But this was cracked up a little too much for me. I felt like it wasn't going to be structurally sound at the end of the day. Now I have some acrylic in the shop. I've actually got quite a bit. I've done little free libraries before and tried to make them look like dollhouses. In the process, you need plastic for glass. Can't put glass in there, not with kids. So I had some extra and I've cut a panel here and I've cut a panel on the bottom. And I'm gonna weld those two in place and once that's done, we'll give it about a week and it should be back up to normal. But I wanted you to see what can happen with things like this. I mean, accidents, they do happen. And it's not a fact, you're going to have accidents. If you're watching this, you've had a few in your shop already. It's how you bounce back from them is what matters. And I'm thinking that this is going to be just fine. If you put your board up there and apply a little pressure, you can get an indentation on this stuff. It's pretty soft, and that'll tell you where you need to cut. I took this board, pushed it up against my light switch, and I got about seven, oh, let's see, uh, yeah, about seven and a half inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my rule, I'm just gonna mark, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna come back with a knife with a box cutter and trim that out. I've got the first piece in and I'm going straight to the knife with my combination square. A good cut allows you to break it off pretty simply. Now we've got to fit our piece in between the conduits and clear the plug. I'm not looking for a perfect fit here. I'm just looking to get the green board up and give myself a bit of a vapor barrier. It's not pretty, but it doesn't have to be. Nobody's going to see this but you. We're going to put up the wall in a number of sections, and the first section we're going to put up is right next to the garage door. And the reason for this is I've got a lot of electrical going on there, and I want my relay, my remote control switch, the switch to the outside light, and one external outlet, all to be available in that point. And then I want my cyclone to be located next to that and have the ability to put a closet wall around to it to dampen the sound. So 
we have a section here that is about yay long. I give this about, I don't know, maybe a foot and a half, two feet, somewhere in between. Doesn't matter. I've already measured it out over there. These are actually cut off based on my measurements. Now I've got right here, I've got two studs back and forth with a stud spacer in between. That's going to cup a piece of conduit line that comes down from the ceiling as you see in the picture. And it will also, I'll leave this stud open from the plywood so the next piece of plywood can attach to it. So we're going to get this hooked up together. Um, I've got a piece of treated wood for my floor. I've got these two already positioned. I've got holes cut for the conduit to come through. I have to trim this back because we've got a piece of trim running all the way across the top here and each one of these boards is notched. So the top plate has to be notched first. So I'll go to the table saw and do that now. I purchased these two and a half inch screws for the bottom. I thought that would be a good idea until it just dawned on me. This is pressure treated. I always say use pressure treated when in contact with concrete even if you have a wonderful floor like this. It has been sealed. This helps protect it from the moisture. So there's an added benefit to this. You have to use a treated screw. The chemicals in here will actually eat a screw away over the course of time. So that, that is a bit of a problem. So I'm going to put the screws in, but I'm going to use pressure treated and these are a little different. On the tops, I use these two and a halves. I want the box for the light switch to be about eight inches off the wall, so I'll take a measure and roughly place him there. The vertical placement of the box is dictated by the sheathing. The little tabs on the side are sized for sheetrock, but we've got three quarter inch ply, so we need to place it a bit higher. I've just cut out a panel here with my track saw and that is going to be the first panel that goes up on this plywood section. I have left myself enough room for an overlap on the 2x4 and uh, that will help me when I put my next panel up to give good stability. I need to cut out holes for these boxes here, the, the electrical boxes. They sit proud, so there has to be room for them. So I'm going to take a pencil, I'm going to draw in, and the intent is I want to stay proud of that by maybe a quarter of an inch. The cover plate will cover things up nicely. Again, staying just outside the line. Well, I'm getting ready to put a Tapcon in right here, and that should be, I think, maybe one here and one here. That'd be more than enough to hold this in place. Um, I've got the bit that comes with the screws, they say to pre-drill a hole is always the best, so I'm looking at this and thinking to myself, I've got a hammer drill right here too with the same size bit, a little bit more aggressive. We'll see how this works, and if we need to go with the electric, we will. I want to make sure that I'm tight up against, <laughs> real tight. We'll go ahead and start here. Well, my drill isn't making quick progress, so I'm going to go to my hammer drill, and I have moved my plate out of the way, and <laughs> to be truthful, it, the hardest thing about this, I think, is finding the hole that you pre-drilled. I, I found the first one. I'm going to have to start searching for the second, but while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and get this done. All right, I've got my Tapcon right here, and I've got a 5 16 inch bit. I'd rather use that than the top here. They never really work real well, those straight bits. And it should just go straight in. Okay, that one drove home. This one didn't. I didn't get it down far enough, or I didn't clean out the hole far enough. And I've got a space up here. Am I worried about that? Not really. You got to keep in mind what these are designed to do. They're designed to go through pressure treated wood 
and they're designed to keep this from moving back and forth. The up and down is not part of it. I have a whole structure here to keep this building from coming off the slab and plenty of weight. So I'm looking at shear resistance right here and that's all I'm looking for. So putting a couple of washers in there, yeah, it might make me feel better, but at the end of the day, it's not gonna do anything. I've got a rafter right here and I've used a stud finder, my stud finder here to find it. I've sunk it, screwed it in and it's solid. That rafter is going to line up right over here. I do not have a plate right here that I can tap into, and that was my hope. They just didn't build it that way. And with cinder blocks being as big as they are, they've got a huge area to land the rafters on. So in all honesty, that's not surprising. So where I am, I'm going to hit this rafter right there with this screw, but I am way too far out, and that's because the quality of the materials at, uh, at the box stores is really falling off, if you can find it. So I've got myself a plate right here, and I've got to do this at a bit of an angle because I just need the room right here. And if you will put that in place right there, it squares up really nice. So now the trick is to get in here and get enough pressure on these Phillips head screws to get him to sink home. All right. That should be good. And there's the test. It is good. That's going to be very nice. Now we get to rearrange wires and get things put up and hopefully a little insulation and plywood. Insulation is in place, and I've got a spacer down here below, quarter inch plywood. If there is any moisture on the floor, I don't want it wicking through this. So we're going to have a little bit of a spacer, and that will continue throughout. I have checked for square, and I am, and that's important because as we move down the line, we don't want a gap to be shown. And every time we put a flat plate up there, I want it to line up flat on flat. So I've checked that for square. I've got my spacer here. I have a couple of screws up there to hold him in place. These screws are deep enough. They only go about an inch into the wood, so we'll have to put a number of them in there. And after we do that, it's just a matter of getting the covers on and putting the plugs in place. Well, my little, I'm gonna call it a pony wall. <laughs> my little pony wall is finished. The electrical is done, everything's hot, everything works. The light switch here that controls the light outside is. It's all good. And I have installed my remote control switch where I turn my cyclone on and I turn it off. And that's working too. Now we'll start this next. And this is where all the structural support for the cyclone goes. In addition to that, we will be running our line to power the cyclone. I want it on this side of this structure. No reason to have it on the other side. I'm using a sheet of plywood as the basis for trying to get this laid out. Now I think it'll work really well. It's certainly gonna keep it square. So take a look at what I've got right here. I've got a support member under there and that helps me get my footer or my bottom plate in place. And I will screw those in in just a few moments again with treated screws. Secondly, notice too that I have all my conduit cut out my, uh, my holes for my conduit and my holes for my, um, my line that's going to power the cyclone. All these are in place and they're all the same. I cut them all out at the same time. So that's good. Now, also, I have taken the time to measure every spot on the cyclone as it changes. Now, the manufacturer has given me a number of drawings and I've taken these drawings and I've put the marks out. So what that does is it tells me about where my support's gonna go. And this is my support. And I've got a piece of plywood here supporting this right here so you can kind of see. This is where I think he's gonna go. This gives me plenty of room here on this wall because when I put my closet in, I'm gonna be a little bit this way on this wall right here. So I have room, I have room. So 
looking at this, I'm kind of changing my mind. I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to put a stud in here and a stud in there to make sure that I get good support under this elbow. And I may put a stud in through here so that I have something to bolt to. Right now, I've only got two spots to bolt to, and I don't feel like that's enough. But if I put a header in here across the top, I can get it really strong. That, in conjunction with the plywood screwed into it, it's going to be plenty beefy, and that's what I'm looking for. We have a test fit, and it's a pretty good one. I'm very happy with the way this is marrying up. Got my supports in there on top for the, uh, to support the steel framework for the Cyclone. Um, everything looks good, clean and flush. I've got pathways for the high-powered line. I have decided I'm going to try to get my relay as high as possible, much like my switch. And uh, that means I'll have to drill a hole in that member right there. I might actually do both. We'll see. Um, as I say, that's my preference. When we put the closet in, I have a lot of wood right here to marry up to. So I'll probably take a two by four and run it right through here. And the plywood will come on this side and go out and around. Um, it's just very convenient. This is going to be a very strong spot in which to start a wall. So it's all coming together. I'm going to drill a hole and I'm going to start putting it in. Next time you see this, it may have insulation in it. This went up pretty quick and pretty easy. Didn't have any trouble with it. And I wouldn't have expected to. It's just a couple of two by fours, some insulation. And uh, the only wire that runs up through here is that wire up there to my relay. Now, the top piece, yeah, that's a little different. A lot of prep work went into getting that relay placed, getting the screws in place, getting the clearance in the back. Everything needed to be set up accordingly, and it works. My remote switch works fine. The relay kicks over just like it used to in my garage workshop. So in this workshop, it should be no different. I'm up on this ladder, and I'm getting ready to make my spots. Now, I have... A board behind this that you've probably seen in another another shot and I have marked it up here and my piece right here is going to go right there now the supports come down a little bit I have marked individual places where I want to pre-drill now what you do see up here is I'm very tight to that so I'm going to have to put on the first bracket and get it over here before I can put in these two holes. As a matter of fact, before I put anything, I need that first bracket on. So pre-drilling is going to be a big deal here. Now, these are 5 sixteenths. I'm just shy of a quarter inch right here. And this is pine, so you want it to be a little bit shy. All right, now that one refused, which means I may have hit a screw. I'll have to look at that a little closer. I've got a little space on that side and that side, according to this, that I can try to hit. But that's a real shame. I, I've got plenty of lugs here. I'm not worried about strength, but I would like to utilize all of them. The other thing you got to be careful of is you can't push too hard, because if you do, the ladder goes that way. <laughs> Well, this is awkward, and I knew it was going to be awkward. But that's what's got to happen in order for this to go. And as you can see, this is why this has got to go first. I can't get this piece in otherwise. So let's see if I can get this. I don't think that's going to hand stick. I just need to get it far enough to... Hold. All right, there's one. Now you can start to see why getting this thing countersunk early makes an enormous amount of difference. This, would have, this could have been very unwieldy otherwise. So I'm going to get my other piece put in now and then snug these up.
This is the top mounting plate, and it is the only piece that is original. Um, I ordered everything else in the blower assembly new, and technically this isn't part of the blower assembly, but I probably should have ordered one of these new as well. The new piece has some reinforcement that goes along in here, and that doesn't surprise me. This unit has warped a little bit, and uh, with the high humidity in Houston, the lack of paint, um, that doesn't surprise me either. So these pieces right here were part of the original support structure that I built. Uh, I did not have steel brackets originally. I had to build it out of a couple of tuba 12s and, and then mount it on the wall with <laughs> thousand and one screws. I like these lag bolts better. I especially like the fact that I know where the studs are and I put them in so I know that it'll be okay. But this right here, I want to give myself a little extra support. These, I didn't even have to cut them. I just saved them from the old shelf and I think they're going to come in real handy. We finished up our platform. This is what sits on top of the two steel arms that are screwed into the wall. Right here, I have my motor and my motor is mounted on its base and of course, the fan is below, and as you might imagine, it's the fan that turns and not the motor. This piece will sit on top like this, and it sits right here. And you got to ask yourself, well, what connects it? Well, all right, I've got four holes right here, and I've got four holes right here. Now, on this side, I've got an anchor nut. And I will have four of these mechanisms, four of these assemblies, I'm sorry. This will screw in to this anchor nut. And then I'll take a pair of, uh, of uh, a wrench and I'll double nut it, tighten it up. This piece of wood right there represents this. So I've got a piece of rubber fuel hose on both sides and it's compressed with a little bit of compression right there to hold it tight. Now what that does is it takes the vibration out of the system and it kind of absorbs it into this hose. I don't have any of these pieces, so what I've done here is I've cut this all thread. I've gone into my bin and I've gotten nuts and bolts and various other things to assemble it. And I have actually put in a larger set of fender washers in here to help better distribute the load into the fuel hose. I didn't like how close it was and I didn't feel good about that. In addition to that, in the inside here, I put a little electrical tape. This, the, it calls for 5 16 inch hose, and I have a little bit larger. I've got 3 8 so I wanted to put a little something, a little electrical tape on the inside to increase the diameter of this rod so that I didn't get as much movement back and forth. All in all, a couple of extra things, but I'm not too sure it's necessary. I've taken the time off camera to put the other three assemblies together. We'll thread these into the existing lock washer underneath the support plate and then double nut them. Now we can install the support plate. We'll finish up with the hardware installation, but I want to reinstall the electrical tape. Got a little roll back, holes were a bit too tight, and that's okay. We'll do it right. The motor fan assembly is complete, and it's time to get it into place. I've set up an intermediate platform on top of my two ladders, and I'll use a block and tackle system to help lift the assembly. It looks a little more precarious than it is. I'm lifting it up with the block and tackle system, so it's not going anywhere. Valerie's trying to guide it into place, and unfortunately, the block and tackle's not centered exactly over where we need it to be, and that's what you're seeing here. But we got it none the same. Valerie's going to take this and just pick it up and put it on there. No. I'm going to get up there and help her. We're going to see if we can lift it up with the help of the pulley. We're having a little bit of problem with the tilt. It's not optimal, but... Uh, I think with this configuration, we can get it up there and get it up there safely. I also want to point out, I am tied off to my dead man. I use him to hold up my tarps when I'm finishing outside, and that'll keep anything from happening that we don't want to happen. Admittedly, 
this process was not as smooth as I had desired. And it is amazing what a half inch difference will make. In the end of the day, we accomplished our goal. Even though we had a slip, the overall procedure was pretty sound. A little bit of muscle, and we're in place. No harm, no foul. This was not optimal, but it's here. The rest of it should be easy. <laughs> well, I mentioned earlier that I didn't have those steel brackets up there when I mounted my cyclone the first time. So this is a little new to me and I've made a mistake, but it's not one that we can't overcome. People who have mounted these up there probably have recognized that I did not put the mounting bracket up. Now this mounting bracket is just a piece of MDF and it's got a section out here cut away. And this section is designed to help that backing bar support this right here. In other words, the, the angles that come out need to be, need to have something a little bit more to keep them level. And I noticed this when I checked it for level. So I am not taking this down. There's no way in heck. What I've done is I've taken some strips and I will actually push those up underneath. It will not be hard. All you need to do if you find yourself in this position, just come up here, give a little bit of a lift, and slide him in. And it goes right up to the top. Now, I will follow up with a nail gun and pop a few nails, but this is going to be fine for me. And if you find yourself in a situation, just keep in mind, you're going to make mistakes. It's how you solve them. This looks a little precarious. <laughs> And I've taken some time to strap it to my makeshift workbench so that it will be stable. The blower assembly is completed and I've taken some time and I've put some of that clear DAP caulk that they recommend in on all the surfaces or all the gaps where you would get air egress into the system. So that step is pretty much completed and that's, that stuff is drying as we speak. The blower assembly is sitting on top of the cyclone. It is not secured. And the reason is I want to make sure I get the angle right to begin with. And part of that is just setting up a few markers so that we can tell where we're going. This right here, I want to be parallel to the wall. Now the intake chute, which is marked by this board right here, and I've got him um, set up accordingly. I want that at 45 degrees. So right here, I've got myself a protractor and I will just sight in on that and get a decent look and it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be very close. This is not rocket science. So what I'll do next, I'll take the top off, put a bead of silicone all the way around it, put it back on and screw it into place with some one and five eight screws. After that, we mount it up to the motor assembly and that'll take a couple of people. The Cyclone blower assembly is propped up on five 2x4s to bring it into level and even with the fan assembly. Valerie's holding this in place. We don't want this thing to tip over and fall like it did the last time. No need to crack that egg again. There are six lugs that attach the blower assembly to the fan assembly and that's what I'm putting in place right now. That is secure. I've got three of them secure. Valerie, you can let go. Pull out those two by fours. All right. Well, now the next thing we're going to work on is getting this filter put into place. And I don't know that I need your help for that, but thank you. Well, as you can see, my filters are behind me. I put a bead of caulk on them so they won't leak. I've got them strapped on. The bottom piece is on too. It isn't shown. And as you can see, I'm probably going to, well, I am going to put a platform to bring it up even with the top exhaust. That's going to be after I get this done. Now, this is going to be the base for my drum, the one that receives the dust and chips. I want to be able to roll it outside the door and empty it outside seems to me to be a good idea, something I've always wanted. So I will cut out the perimeter rim and then I will look at the drum and I'll probably cut a groove out interior so that their drum sits in it just nice. After that, I'm going to install a few wheels and 
we'll be done with this part of it. So we're all set up here. Let me get my glasses. Chips are going to fly. But right now, I don't have dust collection, so that's just the way it's going to be. heard me harp on vibration so now it's time to secure this thing to the stand as of right now it has just been sitting there when I turn this thing on it's gonna vibrate even with all that that rubber hose there in the mounting system so we're gonna secure it recall that I had a metal strip in the back here to help reinforce this MDF this is a very simple process of just securing it to the metal strip with a couple of bolts. And then to take this and secure it that way. I'll do the same thing to the other side and then we won't be going anywhere. I've got a special piece of six inch hose right here and I ordered some of this uh, not that long ago. I think it will come in especially handy for some of the transitions. I've got to drop from the ceiling and I can drop a ways with the six inch PVC pipe, but you know, occasionally you're gonna to need to make a turn and this will help me keep the six inch opening for as long as possible. Now, this is just a simple band. I prefer these, they've got the jump over for the wire and uh, you get a much tighter fit with these, but this is four inch, I don't have a six inch. And actually I don't even have two of these. So this is a very temporary item here and that is primarily just to keep this from, it's to keep it staying out of the way. This will stay put and I can mess with this, but I, want, I don't want this to drop. So this is cut to length, I want it to stay put, and that's good right there. Well, the more intuitive of you have probably noticed I have a, I have a gap here. And this unit was designed for an eight foot ceiling and I've got about nine, nine and a half here. And so I have moved the unit up I want to try to get my duct work as close to the ceiling as fast as possible, and I don't know if I'll get there or not. This chute right here is at 10 degrees, so I'm probably not going to get there, but the closer I can get, the more headroom I've got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a shelf in place to bridge the gap, and I've got about 11 and a quarter inches. This is where this plywood wall comes in really nice. I can screw right to it. I don't have to worry about finding a stud or anything. So I'm going to take a shelf that I've already made out of scrap. I'm going to put it in place and then I'm going to get him mounted up there. And we will level him out and suck up the difference right here with three little feet that are already built into the bottom. Well, sometimes the simplest measures are the best. And this one is just a string and it's hanging from the top. And all I want to do after I get a few blocks in place and I'm just shy of my line there, Make sure that I'm good and centered. I'm also cognizant. I want to be that side of this. And I've got plenty of room on this platform, so I'm not worried about that. But I don't want to interfere with the next plate that's coming. Now, these screws are underneath. I can't bend down low enough to see them. So it's one of those situations where I've got to actually get down underneath where I can see to drive it home. Well, I've got him leveled out, and when I get up there on my chair, I cannot see light in the joint, so I know that it's good. I have also checked my blower for level, and it has not changed, so I'm not pushing up on it. 
I think I've got this one worked. Those three little leveling feet on the bottom, they do a good job. So the last step is to take a bit of caulk and do a bead all around that edge. That'll keep the air from going out around there and blowing dust into the room. And it's all about keeping those fines in the filter and not in your lungs. And that's why I'm looking so forward to getting this unit up and running. So that about wraps it up for this episode. What have I got left to do on this particular project that you're not gonna see? I've got one more piece of plywood that's going there. That's just some two by fours and a piece of plywood. Nothing much to see there. That'll wrap it up for this episode of Roby's Workshop. I'll see you next time.